Uh, <clears throat> welcome back, uh, everybody. Uh, we had uh, Thanksgiving break last week. I hope you you enjoyed the week off from from the seminar as well. Um, and uh, today, uh, Clemens Schindler from Vienna will talk about unique Polish semigroup topology. Please, Clemens. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the introduction and for giving me the opportunity to speak here. It's for me actually a rather special talk because it's the my the first talk I'm, I'm going to give about my own research to an international audience. So, so something I've been looking forward to. Um, I'm going to present one half of my PhD thesis in um, at the Vienna University of Technology. And the results I'm about to present are joint work with my supervisor, Michael Pieske. First of all, I want to give you an outline of what to expect in, in my talk. First of all, I want to um, briefly introduce the general situation which we always need um, if we want to talk about unique Polish semigroup topologies and briefly introduce some, some notions just to make sure that we're speaking the same language. Then I want to formally introduce the what I call unique Polish property um, and give some examples as well as non-examples before going to the, the techniques um, which were used to sh show that the examples I'm about to present are actually examples, that they have this, this property. Then when, when you try and to do, when you try to apply those techniques to the semi-group, and it turns out of increasing functions on the rational numbers, I'll talk more about that later. Um, the, there will be an, an obstacle in our path, um, which I'm going to uh, describe um, before then showing you the, my solution to this obstacle, um, how, how we can actually then treat this thing. So let's dive in. The general situation consists of uh, algebraic topological structures, combined algebraic topological structures. So we have a domain S with some operations, so algebraic structure. Um, and a topology such that the operations are continuous with respect to the topology. So we want uh, compatible structures. Those two kinds of structures shall be compatible. Standard examples, of course, are topological groups, topological semigroups. You name it, um, and many more. Um, for more concrete example, um, the one that will, will be prominent throughout my talk, um, let's look at uh, the case of a countable set A, and then we'll look at the full transformation monoid of all functions A from A to, to A. Um, those functions together with the standard composition of functions, that's of course a, a semigroup, even a monoid. And uh, there's also a canonical topology on that space, namely the, the topology whose basic open sets are these. So we have all functions S from A to A, which for finite tuples, X and Y in A, um, map x to y. So what this does is a basic open set just says, um, and for finitely many places, we prescribe the behavior of the functions. Um, that's the well, point-wise topology. Um, you can, another way to think about this is the, it's the, uh, the product topology on the power a to the a, 
So of A copies of A, where each, uh, where each copy of A carries the discrete topology. Um, as you can easily check, you obtain a topological semigroup. Um, what's more, you have a canonical subgroup, the full permutation group, sim A. Um, so of all permutations, then you get the inversion map, um, which as it as you can easily check is also continuous with respect to the appropriate subspace topology. So you obtain topological group. Um, in fact, you, it's just not just a compatible topology, this point was topology, but you get Polish topologies in both cases. Um, Polish means completely metrizable. So there exists a complete metric which induces our topology. Plus, um, the topology ought to be separable. So there is a countable dense set. Or in this situation, equivalently, the topology is second countable. Um, so there is a countable topological basis. And yes, of course, here it is. Whenever we have such a combined algebraic topological structure, we can ask the following general question. Can, can we reconstruct the topology um, from compatibility with the operations? What I mean by that is in some cases, the algebraic structure essentially encodes the topology in such a way that whenever you have another topology, which ought to be compatible with the operations, um, then this compatibility alone gives you some strong, some, some strong statements about what the topology needs to be, some strong restrictions. And in some cases, it even pins down the topology. Um, in general, this only makes sense if we prescribe some additional topological properties of, of, of our topologies we're looking at. In my case, Polishness, which leads us to the following definition. We start with a Polish group or semi-group. And then I say that uh, this group or semi-group has the unique Polish property, which I'll abbreviate as UPP. Um, if, very straightforward, if the topology is, turns out to be the unique Polish group or semi-group topology on S, so the unique Polish compatible topology. When you look at this definition, um, this is equivalent uh, to whatever you have another Polish group or semi-group, um, then any algebraic isomorphism between our semi-group in question and this new one, um, any algebraic isomorphism is automatically a topological isomorphism as well, so a homeomorphism between the respective topologies. This also gives another reason, I guess, for the name reconstruction. We Here you really see how you can reconstruct the topology from the algebraic structure and algebraic isomorphism is automatically a homeomorphism. In what's, what is to follow, I will mostly be looking at um, automorphism groups and anamorphism monoids of model theoretic structures. So model theoretic structure, again, is a, a domain with some operations and most importantly, um, some relations, um, most importantly for what I'm about to present. Um, think of, uh, of think, think of graphs, then the, the automorphism group is uh, consists of the space of bijective maps on from this graph to itself, which maps edges to edges and non-edges to non-edges. For the endomorphisms, you drop uh, the bijectivity 
assumption and um, you only care about the, that it maps edges to edges. You don't care what it's doing with uh, non-edges. Another example, which will be the most important one, so I'm also say it explicitly, is what if A is an order? Then, well, in the case of an order, then the automorphism group consists of the strictly increasing bijections. Yeah. While the endomorphism monoid is just the, the increasing maps, not necessarily strictly, and it uh, also is not necessarily subjective. So just the increasing functions. So you can have um, constant bits and you can have holes, something like this. Um, This brings us to the examples, um, which is a bit of a tour through history. Um, first, um, there was this uh, the symmetric group on the carbon set or the natural numbers, whatever, which actually dates back to the 1930s um, when the group of, uh, of mathematicians in what's now EU Ukraine, back then Wolf Poland, um, like Barnach and Mal Ula, Mazu, and, and companions. Um, when Ulam asked, is there a, another Polish semi-group topology, other than the, the pointwise topology, which is additionally locally compact? That was his question. And in the 1960s, uh, Gorgon showed that this is not the case. Um, that no such Polish semi-group topology, which is additionally local Polish group topology, sorry, we're talking about groups, Polish group topology, which is additionally locally compact, none of that can exist. And so that was essentially 60s. In the late 80s, it was observed that his proof actually shows uniqueness of the topology. So there exists a unique Polish group topology on the end commutation group of a countable set, namely the pointwise topology. In the 90s, the same was shown for the automorphism group of the random graph. And in the noughties, the same that was shown for the automorphism group of, of Q. It doesn't matter whether you take the strict or non-strict order, the strictly increasing permutations on Q. This also carries a unique Polish group topology. In recent years, the interest somehow moved towards um, semi-groups, um, at least in, may, 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 maybe not moved, but it uh, certainly got interesting as well. In the late, late 2010s, um, Luke Elliott, Julius Yunushas, uh, Zachary Mesian, James Mitchell, Michael Moran, and Jan Perez showed the transformation, full transformation monoid on the Compton set as a unique Polish semi-group topology. So a group of people from St. Andrew, Scotland, as well as Julius Jonusas, who was in Vienna at the time. Um, and then when, in 2020, um, a subset of these people from from St. Andrews, Julius, as well as my supervisor Michael Pinska, um, showed the, the same for the endomorphism model of the random graph. And this has a unique Polish semi group topology. So 2020 not only gave us COVID, it also gave us the information the endomorphism monad of the random graph as unique Polish semi-group topology, even even more than better, a unique second countable Hausdorff topology. So you can uh, drop the metrizability and uh, the completeness type uh, assumption. You can actually drop them. Um, as far as non-examples are concerned for, for groups, let me just mention the additive group of the real numbers. Um, this 
comes from the fact that the this group is algebraically isomorphic to the additive group on R squared, well-known fact. But of course, the, those two can't be homeomorphic with the standard Euclidean topologies. So this is a, a non-example. There also exists a, a non-example like in, in this realm of automorphism groups of omega categorical structures. Um, but it's definitely a, a complicated counterexample. And we essentially know one. Um, for for semigroups, um, there, there are a bit uh, a few counterexamples which are actually easier. For instance, the injective maps on this countable set that uh, also forms a, a semigroup. And there you can explicitly give an alternative Polish semigroup topology. Um, as well as on this uh, endomorphism monad of Q with the strict order. So what we have here is the strictly increasing functions on Q, but they need not be subjective. So you can have holes, thing like this. Um, this you have just injective maps and the this counterexample from the, the monad of injective functions on A essentially lifts. Um, the same holds if you look at the surjective maps um, on A. So when you look at this, um, you might notice if you're only dealing with bijective maps, so with those groups up here, then there's definitely hope uh, to have the unique Polish property. However, if you then drop either the, the surjectivity or the injectivity and just uh, want the other of those properties, then in very most cases, you won't have a, a unique Polish topology. You can just give another one um, for just to... Just to, to, to say it, um, this topology on the injective maps uh, that also lifts to the monad of self embeddings on a omega categorical structure. Um, so, yeah, if you drop either of those two properties, injectivity or surjectivity, then you don't have a unique Polish topology. However, if you drop both and look at semigroups which contain non-injective and non-surjective maps, like the full transformation monad or with the random graph, then again, there is hope that you can have um, the unique Polish property. Um, that uh, directly brings us to the question that I've been asking myself, namely, does the endomorphism monad of Q with the non-strict order have UPP? So this has non-injective maps and it has non-surjective maps and it has maps which are both at the same time. So but, but before there is hope, but uh, of course there could always be a, an alternative topology. Um, and turn out more, more difficult than Somehow I first expected, but the answer is yes. This monad has the unique Polish property. Um, before I start with the, the, the main ideas that go into this, are there any questions? So is it e usually easier to prove yes or easier to prove no? Um, <laughs> well, if you have a, a, a candidate for, for no and it works, it's usually easier. Um, at least I'm not aware of any, any topologies where it was super complicated to show that it was Polish, for instance. I mean, it's uh, theoretically thinkable, but I'm, I'm not aware of examples. Um, so I, I'd say yes is more difficult. And also more publishable, I assume. And also more publishable. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, un unless you find some strange construction, which by some miracle gives you a Polish topology, but then I guess the construction is the publishable fact and not the answer no. Okay. If you know what I mean. Okay, thank you. More questions? Continue. Um, so the the techniques that went into the the semi group examples that I examples that I showed you. So transformation monoid random graph, etc. The, the more examples known. Um, there is uh, it the it. Yeah, do what you expect that you have to do. You take um, you show that this pointwise topology is coarser than any Polish semigroup topology, so has less open sets, and on the other hand, that it's finer than the Polish semigroup topology. And I mean it's very high level, um, but for A to the A and the anamorphism model of the random graph. Um, this worked with the following ideas. So let's start with uh, the fact that the polymorphous topology is coarser than any Polish semigroup topology. Um, for this, the essential ingredient is uh, what's called the Zariski topology on, on the semigroup. Um, for ease of notation, um, allow me to just deal with, uh, with more noise. And I can write down the, the risk topology much easier, and we're talking about anamorphism monoids anyway. So this risky topology um, is generated by sets of non-solutions to equations that you can formulate in in this semigroup language. So you have uh, fixed elements of of your semigroup, um, which uh, you, you look at terms over the language of, of semigroups, um, two terms of maybe different lengths, so K and L could be different, and you look at the non-solutions to this uh, equation. And those sets form the sub-basic open sets, so basic open sets are finite intersections of those. Um, this is a rather weird topology in general. Um, it's definitely, so in general, it's not a semi-group topology. It need not be Hausdorff. Um, but uh, what you can show with a relatively simple proof, um, observation is that the Zariski topology is coarser than any Hausdorff semi-group topology. So in any Hausdorff semi-group topology, these non-solution sets, I might call them, are always open. So as a some, something of a byproduct of that, um, if the pointwise topology and this risky topology coincide, if, if that happens to occur, then the we know that the pointwise topology is coarser than any Hausdorff semigroup topology, in particular, any Polish semigroup topology. So in that uh, case, we're, we're done with that, um, which then gives us, as I said, the Polish topology is coarser than any Polish semigroup topology. Um, there's also another way to, to look at this, which is uh, rather interesting. Um, the pointwise topology um, well, that's defined somehow by the by the action of your endomorphism monoid on the domain, right? You have to plug in values. Whereas this risky topology that's definable totally within the algebraic structure. You just look at, at terms and equations and non-solutions. So this pointwise equals the risky, that somehow means that this uh, action um, 
is in, in some regard already encoded in the purely abstract algebraic structure of your endomorphism monoid. Um, so in other words, you can reconstruct the pointwise topology, so this action, you can reconstruct it from the algebraic structure on your endomorphism monoid. And yeah, when you look at it like this, uh, even without knowing this fact here, then it's maybe somehow clear or at least motivated that the this then gives you some rather strong uh, strong implications if you have this kind of reconstruction uh, action from abstract algebraic structure this must have some consequences um examples for which for which this holds true um essentially all the ones that uh, have appeared so far the Transformation monoid, the endomorphism monoid of the random graph. Most importantly for, for this talk, the endomorphism, grew, uh, endomorphism monoid of Q with the non-strict order. Uh, also it's for the strict order, by the way. Um, and for, for instance, the complete k-partite graphs. Um, all of those are examples for which the pointwise topology equals the risky. Those were shown using some rather ad hoc uh, arguments for the specific monoids in question, uh, just to give a little sneak peek uh, somehow on this another part of my, my PhD thesis, um, we were able to give some, some more systematic conditions on, on the structure A, um, which then are sufficient to yield that the endomorphism monoid satisfies this uh, property point was equals the risky. So in any case for, for Q, um, this is done. So what, what this means is you have when we have the pointwise topology down here, you know that any Polish semi-group topology on and Q must be somewhere in this uh, region above the pointwise topology in the in, in the space of all topologies. So this is already something. For the converse direction, um, the essential ingredient is uh, automatic continuity. Is that it's also the, uh, what ha has been the essential ingredient for the, the previous proofs, A to the A and random graph and whatnot. Um, if you have a topological semigroup and a class of topological semigroups, then you can say your semigroup has automatic continuity with respect to the class. If similar to what we had before, um, for any um, semigroup in, in the class and for any algebraic ho homomorphism, so not isomorphism, homomorphism, um, it is automatically continuous with respect to the topologies. So that's automatic continuity. And if you have automatic continuity with respect to the class of all Polish semigroups, then this will uh, give you um, what, what you want, that um, the Polish topology is finer than any Polish semigroup topology. Just look at the identity map between pointwise and any other Polish semigroup topology. If this then is automatically continuous, this exactly means that T is contained in the pointwise topology. So this um, oh, certainly looks good. Um, of course, what, what I will need uh, in a few moments is the same definition also makes sense not only for semigroups but also for groups. Um, very same definition. Um, how do you show this if you have an, an endomorphism model of something? Um, the, the successful technique um, has been uh, to use lifting from, from a subset. So you, often this was the automorphism group. So use uh, 
if you know that the automorphism group of your structure has automatic continuity, um, then you're sometimes able to lift that to the endomorphism monoid. Um, for instance, this was the technique here for the random graph. Yeah. Automorphism group of the random graph has automatic continuity, and this was then lifted. So let's look at the situation for Q. Um, um, a great thing, um, theorem by Rosendahl and Soletsky from 2007, um, the automorphism group with the pointwise topology has automatic continuity, uh, the rather strong form, namely with respect to the class of second, all second countable topological groups, all of those. So this is definitely great. Um, using an argument by the people from Scotland I mentioned, um, you can replace these groups also by semi-groups. So when you have a semi-group homomorphism, so it's just multiplicative from the automorphism group into any second countable semi-group, this is automatically continuous. So that's a rather strong statement. And definitely looks good. But, and this is the problem I've been uh, talking about in the very beginning, as I found out uh, relatively quickly, um, the endomorphism monoid, it just does not have automatic continuity, not even with respect to the class of all Polish semigroups. It just doesn't have it. So uh, does that mean this, uh, all of this doesn't work? Well. Um, there's a way around it. My solution was the following. Um, okay, automatic continuity becomes easier um, when you have a richer topology. So with more open sets of finer topology, then automatic continuity becomes easier. So my, my idea was to look for a, something I call the rich topology. So a topology which is finer than pointwise, um, such that with this topology, the endomorphism on it has automatic continuity. Um, and to somehow correct uh, the, the mistake I made in the subsequent step, um, so look at the, let's look at this in more detail. There's a risky type of argument, um, as I drew before, showed us something like this, that any Polish semigroup topology is above uh, pointwise. Now, this proposition one I've written here, if uh, that with this uh, rich topology, whatever that might be, um, we have automatic continuity, which then implies uh, as before, using the identity map, that the rich topology is finer than any Polish semigroup topology, gives us something like this. Pointwise at the bottom, rich topology at the top, and somewhere in between, that's where our Polish semigroup topologies must be. Uh, note that this rich topology um, that's not a semi-group topology, it's not a Hausdorff topology, it's neither of that. It's, again, a really weird topology and uh, something that I only use as a bootstrap, essentially. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, this does not have any of the, the nice properties. Um, okay, so now we know that the, our topology is in between pointwise and rich. So this is something uh, we have somehow have to collapse back down. And as you see, proposition two, if you can show that for all Polish semigroup topologies, um, whenever you have a topology which is sandwiched like that, it already coincides with pointwise. If you can show that, then uh, you're done. And also note, uh, Unfortunately, I won't be able to go into details of how 
like this works, but uh, there you really need Polish. You need the regularity of the topology and you need um, a completeness type at least. You, I, I had to apply Bayer's category theorem. So completely matches is a little bit too much. You can do with bare space, but uh, who cares? Um, before I proceed, are there any questions about this uh, general strategy? Okay, great. Um, let's look at the main main instrument to show this lifting lifting process and please don't don't be alarmed um about the rather ugly definition um it's much clearer than it looks like um property which uh, actually the, those people from scotland called uh, property x um strengthened form on, on this slide, you start with the semigroup and the topology on the semigroup. It need not be a semigroup topology or Polish or Hausdorff or whatever, just a topology. And you have a subset and a topology on the subset. Think of the endomorphism monoid and the automorphism group as your subset. And uh, yeah, topologies for the Small topology, definitely think of pointwise and for the upper one, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Then, um, property X, so the semi group has property X with respect to the subset. If, okay, what does that mean? You have um, fixed maps F and G such that any um, element of the semi group can be decomposed in this fashion. And some property about the topologies uh, hold, which I go into in a minute. Um, what this means, think of, of S as a set of sandwiches. And what this means is you have two fixed slices of bread, such, um, and uh, D is a set of fillings. So you have two slices of bread, F and G such that any sandwich S, S as in sandwich, um, can be written as slices of bread and some filling in the middle. In such a way that when you start with a um, open set and, and not too small, uh, somehow large enough uh, set of fillings, um, there exists a large enough set of sandwiches with respect to the topologies we're talking about, such that any sandwich from this set of sandwiches can be understood as it's made with the same slices of bread and one of the, the fillings from your large enough set of fillings. So what this does is it enables you to understand sandwiches by looking at the fillings. And if now the set of fillings has some nice properties, then you can imagine that this lifts to the set of sandwiches. That's what this uh, property really means. Um, this lifting proposition is the one that I've uh, written here. Um, if the, the subset has automatic continuity and property X holds, then automatic continuity gets lifted to the big semigroup. Um, with this uh, technique, um, both the tra transformation monoid and the morphism monoid of the random graph and some more uh, were treated. Um, I need to generalize that a bit. Um, first, I want to give the the generalization, the actual definition that the, the authors uh, originally gave. 
because what they did was um let me put it like this they exchanged these two quantifiers they exchanged the quantifier on the sandwiches and the quantifier on the slices of bread so what this means is you allow different kinds of of bread um for every sandwich there exists well, there exist two slices of bread such that the same thing as before holds so yeah as i said you allow different kinds of of bread white brown rolls whatever the important thing to notice is um in this uh, like compatibility with the topology um what you require is that uh, your set of your open set of sandwiches it must pin down the kind of bread you have to use so notice here you have to use the same slices of bread as originally so yeah, this open open set of sandwiches needs to say this sandwich is made with white bread. That's the original property X, um, which uh, turned out also to be not quite enough for the the situation with Q. Um, so I came up with the following generalization. Which I call pseudo property X bar. Let me walk you through it. You start with a monoid instead of a semigroup. You'll see in a minute why. Um, but we're, we're thinking of monoids all this time anyway. So um, bear with me. Um, so, what you do is on the one hand, you increase the length so instead of instead of two slices of bread as before fs and gs we now have three slices of bread fs hs and gs so we're looking at club sandwiches now three slices of bread and two th uh, two portions of filling um this is done to give us uh, more more flexibility more slices of bread makes it easier to decompose stuff. Um, and as you can see, see on the left hand side, there's something changed as well. Um, we are not decomposing S, we're decomposing uh, the composition first S and then so ES, a map ES, which needs to be left invertible. So that means there exists a P and S such that PES is equal to one. Now you see why we need a monoid. I need this one. Um, so what's happening here is you uh, apply um, a transformation on, on your sandwich. You embellish your sandwich to make it easier to decompose it. So what happens is you put a toothpick inside your, inside your, your, your club sandwich to make sure it doesn't fall apart. Because the uh, sandwich that has fallen apart is a bowl, and uh, it's much more difficult to understand the bowl in terms of uh, your ingredients than a neatly packed sandwich. Um, in more mathematical terms, it's uh, it can happen that using such a map ES um, and post composing it with uh, an arbitrary map. Um, you can embellish embellish the map and make it somehow more more generic and easier to be decomposed. Okay. And all the rest is the same as before. For open sets of uh, of fillings, now we have two open sets of fillings. Um, there needs to be an open set of now club sandwiches, such that once you put the toothpick in. You can decompose this uh, neat club sandwich um, using the same slices of bread and fillings from our open sets of fillings. Uh, 
Um, that's pseudo property x bar. X bar comes from the fact that uh, we increase the length, and pseudo is uh, refers to this e s uh, on the left. Okay, let me copy that to the next slide. Um, and uh, as you might now imagine, um, this proposition one from before, we were able to show that uh, the endomorphism monoid together with the rich topology has pseudo property X with respect to the automorphism group with the pointwise topology. So for these choices of semigroup and subset, semigroup and subset and topologies, um, this club sandwich property X uh, holds. And uh, hence immediately generalizing the um, this lifting result I, I cited above, um, you then uh, obtain that the endomorphism monoid with the rich topology has automatic continuity with respect to the class of second countable topological semigroups. Um, so to wrap up, let me remind you of, of, of the steps. First, you do the step with the with the Zariski topology, um, reconstructing reconstructing the pointwise topology from the Zariski topology. So reconstructing the action from the algebraic structure of of our endomorphism monoid, which then gave us that pointwise topology down here, this cone and the Polish semigroup topologies are somewhere in this code. Okay, then using um, pro pseudo property X bar, you get pointwise down here, rich up here, all Polish semigroup topologies somewhere in the middle. And then you have to do this uh, you need to close this gap. Uh, don't want to call it collapse. Yeah, close, close the gap. Close the gap between the rich topology and the pointwise. Once you know that uh, this topology T in the middle is actually Polish. That's why we use Polish, um, which then gives us pointwise is equal to this arbitrary Polish semigroup topology that we started out with. Here also you, you notice that the rich topology, of course, cannot be Polish semigroup topology. Um, otherwise, uh, referring to Martin's question before, other, if the rich topology had been a Polish semigroup topology, the answer would have been no to my question. Um, and it would have been uh, quite a lot be easier than this answer, which turns out to be yes, using this uh, pseudo property X uh, argument. Okay, that brings me to the end of my talk. Thank you very much for for having me. And uh, it's a little after ten in in. 10 p.m. in Europe, and some, I guess it's a little after 3 p.m. in in Boulder. So my apologies to anyone who might have become hungry at its undue time. Thank you very much. Thank you.